kind of weird, right? Well, that's what I'm doing in today's lesson. We're going to work on, this is mostly just a picking exercise, but it sounds really creepy and really weird. And you can do it anywhere on the fretboard. And there's a, a few ways to do this. I'm going to show you a, a few variations. I'm not exactly sure what I even title this video. Maybe Sinister Weird Creepy Lick. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to start. I'm going to start because of the distance. I'm going to start here between the 4th, 5th, and 6th frets. And the pattern is, we're going to go middle finger first. Then ring finger, first finger, back up to middle. So we're going to kind of come full, full circle. Okay. Now that's the easy part. Down, up, down, up. This is all alternate picking. And then the next note is going to be that ring finger starts down, up on the previous string. So we're going to have an open string in that. And it's always going to be the string we just came from. Okay. And then we start the same pattern on this string. Middle, ring, first, middle, middle, next string, open, previous string. That's going to change every time. So I was just doing that just to kind of give you a, a unified sound here. Okay. So this can happen anywhere. I can go, it's always between three frets. So we could go seven, eight, nine. Okay. And then you get to a point where you can't come. Uh, can't come to a previous string. So there you want to switch it back up. Okay, so just to make myself clear, we're going middle, ring, first, middle on one string. Coming down, and that when you switch is going to be a, is a downstroke. Every time you change strings, going this way is a downstroke and back up on the previous open string. And if you just do that on one string, Then remember, on the same string that your ring finger's on, you're going to start with your middle and then come back. So you have to lift that ring finger and come back to it. That's one of the tricky parts there. And you can't go back down any further. So what I've decided to do is to try to go back up and find a pattern to do that. So when I get to the end here, let's go back to the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth frets here. So let's go all the way down. Now what I'm gonna do here is come back to that ring finger then open A string. So I'm going to do that, the open string just before on this side. And then that'll let me start with my middle finger again. Now I can do one of two things here. I can do the same pattern there now. Oh, up on the, the next string down and then start with the middle finger on that string. But when I do that, it kind of kills that open string sound. So what I would probably prefer to do is continue on the same pattern of using the previous string like this. The first time we'll do that, but when we come to the A string, we'll go just like we was going down, but we do the same pattern going up now. That way we'll have an open string before we get to the next string and it'll still be ringing out. So to, to reiterate, when we get to the end here, come to that third, up on that open A, and then resume the pattern from the A string, middle finger, middle ring, first, middle, middle ring on the next string, open, where your middle finger just was. So now we're playing the open string before the next pattern, instead of after the previous pattern. And you can continue on from here. And just 
keep going on and on. And that's a good finger exercise and a good picking exercise. Now the variation on that is you'll get to the bottom faster and it's not as many pick strokes. We're going to still be on the first, uh, these three frets here. But what, what the pattern is going to be now, let me just do it for you and then I'll tell you the pattern. Okay. So obviously there's another stroke that we're not doing. This one we're going to start with our first finger and then do that same ring finger and then open. And then all we do, the next, uh, the rest of the strings are the same thing. Start with the first finger. Then I'll probably ascend doing the same thing. One, two, three, open, and then back to these two. Combine both of them. Then what you can do is just go up one fret, depending on which pattern you either start with your first finger or your middle finger. Okay, so picking wise for the first pattern, it's always going to be down, up, down, up. Skip to the next string, that's a down, and up on the open. Okay. And for the second pattern, it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Once again, I'm skipping the next string, then up on the open. So that's, the picking is a little bit easier on that, but it's, it's causing you to move along the strings. And that's very important for people who have problems figuring out which string to play. I have a lot of students, mostly beginners, who have issues with which string I can't, I'm, I'm playing the string, but I'm not picking it. What's going on? And that's because they haven't spent enough time on this side doing the picking things and little picking exercises to get used to where that is. So if you can take just this small of a movement from one string to the next, and then come back to that B string, G string B, back to the G. So it's all picking on one string for a little while. One, two, three, four notes. Switch a string, come back to that string, come back to the string, uh, the A string. So, for example, D, 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 A, D, A, 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 E, A, A, E, 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 E. Okay? So that's where the pick is going to land. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. Uh, just. That was another happy accident that I come across, and I was really enjoying doing that. And it's fun moving that all across the neck. These open strings add a lot of dissonance. That would be a cool one. like that's in a key. So I hope you get a lot out of that. That's a really, really good picking exercise and finger coordination exercise. Obviously, I will probably not be tabbing that. That's just way too much headache. <laughs> so just try to rewind the video, slow it down if you have to using YouTube's speed control settings. And I don't even know what the next video is gonna be. I just know that uh, as I get some of them, as I get some ideas, I sit down and record them. And I'm really enjoying using my Electro Voice Cobalt 4 instrument mic. That's what I'm using here. You may see that in the video. Um, I've had that for years and it's, it seems to have a good tone for this guitar. Uh, I apologize if it's a little boomy. I tried to get it to a nice, you know, balanced tone. Hopefully it is, but um, it's not too bad to set up. I just leave it sitting here and when I need it, I extend it out and it's ready to go. So I may start using that, especially with my, my new camera that I've been using, the Goosey uh, HD92 1080p G-U-C-E-E. -E. Really good camera, but the microphone stinks. It's a terrible microphone. So I'm always going to have to be recording into my audio interface, which I'm using a Behringer Euphoria UMC 20, uh, 204HD, which is a two-input uh, 
interface and I love it. It's a great interface. You can check out all these products by going to ericbatycom slash shop and uh, you can uh, do searches for that and that will bring you up to those products. But anyway, thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hopefully it helps you with your picking. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if it does. Also check out bluegrassguitaressentials.com for more essential bluegrass picking techniques. Uh, I really try to go over the habits that people have and try to help them establish better habits to help them with correct picking. And you really kind of have to trust that these down-ups will work if you do them correctly. Uh, I've got a, uh, several students, at least one that I can could, I could think of that I know of, who has a problem with down-ups. And he says, well, it just doesn't make sense. It's a waste of movement. I, I'd rather do all downstrokes. I'm saying, well, that's fine, but when you get to playing fast, you can't do all downstrokes. You have to have these down-ups to help get, guide you, and that's eighth note picking. So, don't want to get into all that, but anyway, check out BluegrassGuitarEssentials.com for more of that, and I'll see you on the next video, whatever, whatever that may be. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Keep playing bluegrass.